Hi, so Jennifer. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your background? I started my career at uh, ICI, uh, the research station, as an ecotoxicologist, looking at the environmental safety of pesticides, particularly to beneficial insects. I did a lot of work on IPM, integrated pest management. I then moved around the world, looking at the environmental safety of pesticides, US, Brazil, Australia, uh, ended up in the UK and then moved into regulatory affairs, predominantly working opposite the US. Then I moved into a more commercial role, having taken an MBA as um, head of marketing for the UK for Syngenta and then head of stewardship um, for Europe. Then I moved into biocontrol and I became the general manager of Biological Crop Protection Limited. And that's where I really learned that biocontrol works and you can still maintain your yields, your profit and the quality of your produce. After the four years working in biocontrol, I moved to the management board of Certis Europe and there I was able to develop the biological strategy which remains a fundamental part of that company today. I'm delighted to join IBMA and take on the executive director role. Give us a bit more information on what it is that makes you the right person to be the new executive director of IBMA. IBMA, as a trade association, is truly an advocate of IPM, integrated pest management, and sustainable agriculture, building the case for starting with agronomy, progressing through observation, forecasting, moving to more biological pest control measures, and finally using conventional if necessary. My background in both conventional and biological um, pest control allows me to understand the challenges of sustainable agriculture and IPM from both the conventional and the biological perspective. Building this association uh, across Europe is key to IBMA being able to achieve its goals, particularly around proportionate regulation. I've worked in pan-European organisations for the past 20 years, and so I'm well placed to be able to help IBMA achieve this. What is your vision for biocontrol and what benefits will it bring to society? For sustainable agriculture and maintaining biodiversity, we need to have biocontrol at the heart of the pest and disease control programme. Feeding the world will become more challenging with population growth, with climate change, putting more pressure on the available land. But more than minimise the impact on the environment, help the environment to deliver the essential ecosystem services that there are for life. With biocontrol at the heart of the programme, we're able to do this. As you can see, I'm passionate about biocontrol and showing that it works. In policy terms, the next five years are crucial for us to be able to show that biocontrol can work effectively and deliver the yields reliably if it's a cornerstone of the pest and disease programmes. This is not just about product replacement. This is about thinking differently about how we grow crops. In horticulture and speciality crops, many farmers already have biocontrol at the centre of their programme. We now need to make this the norm in arable and broadacre crops. Creating these programmes and making them work and demonstrating that to farmers, advisors, stakeholders, society as a whole is why I'm here. Together, as a biocontrol industry, we need to move from being the new disruptive technology at the edge to being the modern, reliable technology at the centre. We need to embrace all the modern techniques of digital forecasting, monitoring, to allow us to maximise the effectiveness of biocontrol. In such a rapidly developing industry, there are a lot of priorities, partnerships, issues and things that we have to tackle. What are your priorities over the next one to two years? Firstly, we need to finish the great job on proportionate regulation that's been initiated by the team. We've got teams of working groups looking at decision trees for the data requirements for biologicals, that's for microbial, for natural substances and for senior chemicals and we have representatives from member companies actually working together to be able to submit their views to the Commission by the end of the year. A key priority is to promote biocontrol 
and to show that it works. This can be done through practical demonstrations on farm to show policy makers, advisors, farmers that this works. We will continue to implement the work with Copacajica, iPhone, PAN to help us achieve this. We will also reach out to other sustainable agriculture organisations, accreditation organisations, food companies, all the people who are actually trying to create a shift in the way that agriculture is done. In parallel, we will lobby for the next step in proportionate regulation, which is to have a specific biological regulation that's fit for purpose for biologicals. So they can be placed on the market rapidly while still ensuring correct safety standards. We will work with other organisations that want to achieve the same goal in order to maximise our effectiveness. I would like to see more engagement with members and speak to them either face to face or on the telephone to actually understand their needs. So that's each of the 254 members that we have. I'd like to see us make use of secondments and other innovative ways where we can bring more people from the industry into the association and then they can go back to industry again so we can keep the industry association fresh, modern and ready to go. A new and very important area is forming partnerships with digital companies and associations. The data now available to us at plant level, soil level, field level can help us implement biocontrol more effectively and more rapidly. Our industry needs to move on. It's now less about the what of new technology and more about the how do we implement it effectively. The development of the association while I have been executive director over the last 10 years has been immense. Where do you see things developing in the next 10 years? Where do I see us in 10 years time? I see biologicals at the heart of the programs used in agriculture. I see biological control as the mainstay in pest and disease control. This will link in with all the other aspects of sustainable agriculture from agronomy, nutrition, water management. I see one regulation covering all biologicals and rather than seeing an environment that's depleted, we will actually see an environment that will have improved ecosystem services as a result of how we're farming. To get us where we want to be in 10 years time, IBMA needs a kit. That's collaboration, compliance, implementation and training. Looking first at collaboration, we need to collaborate with all the technologies and all the other people working in sustainable agriculture to be able to deliver that while actually improving the biodiversity and the environment. Compliance. As the industry grows, it needs to develop the corporate governance structures and skills of established and reliable industries. We need to facilitate training in corporate governance for our members. Implementation. The work ahead is about how to make biocontrol work consistently in the field, especially in broad acre arable crops. Demonstration of working programs by taking best practice from horticulture and speciality and using that to help us in arable is the key next step. Training. Growing enough food sustainably is a key job for the future. Young people are interested in working in the bioeconomy. IBM A will work with training organisations to help train young people in our industry. The time for biologicals is now. And to achieve the shift to a more sustainable agriculture with biologicals at the heart of the pest control programme will require collaboration, demonstration that biocontrol works in the field and engagement with a new generation that want to work in the industry, in the bioeconomy and to make a difference to the future of agriculture. That's truly admirable and I thank you a lot for being able to have this conversation today. Thank, thank you. you, David. Thank you.